Hi and welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. We are going to take a good look at Salut d'Amour by Edward Elgar and this particular arrangement by Richard Jones is on the ABRSM Grade 3 list for 2021 and 2022. Um, Salut d'Amour was very famously written by Elgar as an engagement gift for his fiancée, to be wife, Caroline Alice Roberts in 1888. Originally written for violin and piano, and we'll end up discussing that in a bit more detail when we look at all the phrasing marked here. But um, subsequently written for all sorts of instruments, very frequently arranged as well, and because it's so beautiful. Um, and um, off we go. <laughs> We're going to discover all sorts of things about the music. Um, I'm going to go through it hands separately, and then at the end I'll go through it slowly hands together as well. It starts off. Those first two bars are telling us what key we're in, telling our ear what key we're in, D major. It's simply playing a chord of D major, isn't it? And that is so common. When you're playing the piano and you're accompanying another instrument, you play an introduction and you will very often just die away a little bit before the solo instrument comes in. The articulation in those first two bars as well paves the way for the articulation pretty much throughout for the left hand. It's bass, lean, detached, bass note, lean, detached, bass note. Yeah, there's, there's, it's a lean, rather than a, an accent of any description. A lean and just make sure you give that note its full value <laughs> onto that note. Um, Graham Fitch called it, and I absolutely agree with him, called it the bold font of music. I think that's a good, really good way of describing it. Um, let's now take our way through the right hand. Now, if I just play the first four bars from bar three, I see that as one phrase. If I was singing it, <laughs> I shan't put you through that. It would all be in one breath. But if we look at detail at the at all the markings, we might think, oh gosh, there's a slur there, a slur there, crescendo. Is it meant to be? I think not. It's a sort of halfway house between that and uh, it's all really one big phrase. And think a bit about violin playing, string playing, where you can play notes with one bow or the other, or you can even link up notes with the same bow, da, 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 or with the same bow. They would be super legato. But surely you can also play legato by by da do 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 So there I followed these slurs as if they were my bow indications. And that gives us a bit of an insight into the way it should go as well, I think. Lean, dying away at the end of the phrase. The answering phrase. Way sharp. Heading towards there, I think. And that phrase just so beautifully takes us into the next one. We're growing, are we? And then dying away. And the fourth finger here is crucial because we're going to need to take that F sharp that's written in the bass clef in our right hand, let's go for it. All the while holding on to the D. And as I hit that A, my D comes off. Leap up to carry on. And all that little bit as well is slowing up writ, but now I need to get back to the original speed. It's the same thing, just up an octave, isn't it? Nearly fell off that F sharp. Now 
this is tricky, let's go slowly. What we need to do is to, hold on a minute, that E there in bar 25, it's got a stem going down and a stem going up. What's all that about? Well, there are two lines of music going on in that right hand. The top line is the melody, that E, bar 26. And at the same time, there's a, a second violin part from that, uh, that same beat. Doing that beautiful scale drifting down the piano, but we've got to play both in the same hand. So that's going to be, let's go from the beginning to the bar. Hold on to the E, repeat the E, and when we arrive on the A, that hyphen four means swap to the fourth finger for the E, and that's in order to play smoothly to the E sharp, which takes us to the octave F sharp, beginning of bar 27. Let's go through that again, beginning of bar 25. might even want to do fourth finger there to get it even smoother, but it's not necessary. Crescendo, as if we weren't feeling it anyway. Rit, slow down, similar story to what we've just been talking about. Then a huge leap, which is a bit awkward, I have to admit. A bit clunky. Oh, that wasn't meant to be rude, but... It's tricky. Notice I held on to that D at the top there. So there seems to be quite a lot going on from bar 25. Don't panic if that feels a little bit more tricky because it is, there's an awful lot going on there. Let's think through the left hand. From bar three. Um, let's think it without the pedal just for a, a moment. We've already talked about this. And I would still hold on to that bass note, even if I am using the pedal. Um, strictly speaking, it's not necessary, is it? As soon as you hit a note, if you're using the pedal, you're holding it anyway. But it's good um, discipline, and ultimately your, your pedaling may become, and in the future it will definitely become, more complex than simply holding on for a whole bar. You'll be sort of fluttering the pedal up and down much more. And this is leading you towards that way of thinking. So hold on to the bass note is what, what I'm heading for. A yeah, third there makes really good sense. You've got to know where you're going, haven't you? The left hand there is leaping around just a little bit and it's going to be leaping around a bit more in a moment. So we really need to know the notes and, and take your time, go through nice and steadily. Always better to play slowly, you know, mind-numbingly slowly, but play the right notes. As soon as you're starting to play wrong notes, you're training your hand to go into the wrong place. And if you're playing wrong notes, it's because you're going too quickly. You haven't really absorbed what's going on. So just take it right down. Um, I'm going to carry on. Bar 11. Again. Mm, I'm putting third on that G and I'm pausing because my hand has got some stress there. My hand is feeling uncomfortable and I'm wondering if I can suggest an alternative thinking. Let's keep going and see what the logical... Okay, well that's an option. Um, and if we could jump to bar 26, 28, 29, they even suggest third finger on that G. So that's the view of obviously somebody, the editor of this, possibly Richard Jones, possibly somebody else. But if we did do the fourth, let's have a think. feels more relaxed and bearing in mind I'm going to be using the pedal that might get my vote. Let's move on bar 15 and here of 
course the right hand is doing the top note. A bit of slowing up there, there will be, and then we're back into, we know this already, it's the same as the beginning, just up an octave. That's quite a leap, isn't it? It's a 2-5-1 cadence, isn't it? E minor. Ask me if you want to know more about 251s. There you go, uh, just tap it into YouTube, there are a zillion videos on it. And now, five there, yes, that's good because it means we can do the fourth leading to the fifth. Again, it's trying to <coughs> create fingering that's going to give us legato lines. Could we do it another way? Oh, sure, we could do four, five, and then just jump the fifth. Two notes with the same finger, almost certainly. Could do if your hand's big enough, but... And again, this sharing two notes with a thumb, very common. Uh, not very common, but it does appear uh, quite often. <laughs> Ooh, augmented sound. stretch now aren't we poco più lento poco a little più more lento slowly a little more slowly diminuendo again it's one of those signs whereas it's one of those signs that you'd be hard pushing not to want to slow down and get quieter as you finish a song um, let me now go through it with both hands together, really nice and steadily. I will pop in the pedal, um, and I might just mention the odd thing as I'm going. Um, just before I do, the suggested speed for a performance is about 69. Actually, I felt that a bit fast for my taste. I felt it could have gone an even a bit slower than that. But it's for an exam, so we ought to have this in mind. But for now, let's go nice and steadily. Okay, and Antino Saluda, more engagement gift. Dying away. Tune, lots of tone. Lots of tone. <laughs> Sorry if I told you this before, mentioned this before. Tone implies a bit of weight to the keys. Feeling that key bed and feeling just a little bit of pressure against that key bed to make your instrument sing out. So tone. Dying away at the end of a phrase. Lots of tone on the top notes here. La it's very helpful to sing through as you go. Um, you know, am I really listening to the top note? Am I following that top line? Dying away. Fourth finger crucial so that I'm ready for that. Lots of hand movement in that bar, isn't there? to know where you're going for that A. <laughs> Whoops. I decided did some the wrong not the finger that's marked in the book. Holding on to things in the right hand here. Swap the finger. That was almost just instinctive, but again, the fifth finger would work fine there. Again, two line 
sounds of music in a single hand, big leap, coming to a conclusion. And keep the pedal down throughout all of that because you're just playing notes of a D major chord at the end. Um, I hope that little walk through was useful. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece, isn't it? And um, Marie, I hope you enjoy learning this. This video is for you. And if you have any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Take care. Bye-bye for now.